CME Group launched Micro E-Mini Futures Contracts. Discover how a smaller Micro E-Mini Futures Contract opens the world to greater trading possibilities. Welcome to Market Movers. I'm Jim Murio with Scott Martin. Hi, Jim. Okay, so we have non-farm coming up on Friday. Oh. Okay, in the midst of a fairly historic Fed pivot from they were just in three tightening several months ago, and now we're pricing in three <laughs> eases. Um, what's the what's best for stocks from this number? <laughs> That's a good question. I actually didn't expect such a direct answer. good yeah. one. And, and I still lost the fact you said historic Fed pivot because it feels like Fed from like six <laughs> months ago. Yeah. I mean, anyway, I think the number, I hate to say it again, has to be kind of down the middle of the fairway in the sense that in that range, Jim, of say about 150K to maybe 200, doesn't upset the economic growth story, but with little in the way of wage gains other than what we've seen so far this year, that keeps the Fed in the game on the rate so cuts. So to clarify, a pretty good number, but not so good with wage gains that make us think the Fed might tighten. Absolutely, That's all of us in the I sense, including the Fed, yes. Okay, now before we dive into our trade discussion, I'd like to point out that these are examples, not recommendations or advice. When we priced this out, the S&P was trading about 28.22 after a couple good days in a row. Scott. Yeah, a couple great days in a row and some follow through too, Jim, with mm -hmm. a little bit of volume here. I mean, volume is drying up a bit here as we get to these highs, but my goodness, I mean, you take a snapshot of a given day and you're looking yeah. at 50 handles in the S&P one way or the other, Jim. So. Today kind of have an interesting example to talk about that might help one express themselves maybe a little bit more cautiously as we go into the non-farm number. And of course, what I believe is probably gonna be, oh, some more trade rhetoric maybe in the future. So Jim, as an example, today I'm looking at buying the 2775, 2800 put spread, my friend, for six ticks. Now, I'm not just gonna do that and leave that out there. I'm gonna try to pay for this a little bit. As you know, I like to do that because maybe I get a little bit uh, appreciation price-wise. So I wanna get something for it. So I'm gonna sell a 2850 call, just naked for nine ticks. Now, both trades are gonna expire June 12th. So we have a couple days after the non-farm comes out on Friday. I net three ticks by doing this. So about 150 bucks I take in that I can take you to dinner on, by the way. But the risk is though, aside from obviously the put spread being on, is that I get uh, short at 28.50, right? Because okay. I sell that call and that comes in against me because say the market rallies past 28.50 and I have that naked call Okay, and we talk about this before. I look at that and say that's selling in the 28.50 call. That's not in my risk wheelhouse. It's outside of it. But I look at it and I know you do things like this and it's less risky than just being short the market right here. And I understand that. I just, if you're, if you're willing to be short at 28.50, um, then I think it's a fine trade. Are you going to hedge it at all? I am. I'm going to hedge it with some micros potentially if it starts as to it go against close. me. And okay. it's not that far along in advance as far as the hist as far as in the future, right? So there's not a lot of time where the market could rally. It, it has, the market doesn't have a lot of time, I should say, to rally against me Understood. to where it does expire. Okay. Wednesday, I can hedge it out with micros. And if it breaks that key 2800 level, I believe the shot at filling out that put spread is nice. Right. Speaking of micros, I'm, I'm looking at buying the June micro, MES, uh, at 2830. Now, when we just said we're, tra we're trading at 2822, I sometimes stop in the futures trade. So as it goes a little bit higher, set a stop to buy it at um, 2830 with a target of 2880 on the upside, 50 ticks, and a stop out at 2795, which is below that all important 2800 level that we've been looking at so much. So this risks 175 to make a potential 250. The beauty of the micros you can wind it out a little bit and sleep at night because it's less exposure. Well, you have no trouble sleeping at night, I've heard. But re re regardless of that, I like the levels for two reasons. 28 is a great level on the top end of things if, if it does continue to rally as far as the ES goes. And then certainly in the bottom, as you mentioned, 2, that 2800 level, it sometimes overshoots and then bounces anyway. It doesn't have to be right at 2800. That's another great stop to have in if you happen to be wrong on your position. With the short answer, are the tariffs the biggest story? Is the Fed the biggest story? Or are they both related? Yes. They go together, right? Well, they're both related, and one influences the other in one right. degree because we've seen the Fed commentary reflect that. Agreed. Thanks for joining us on Market Movers. I'm Jim Urio, where we are helping to make you a better trader.